Good morning. Welcome to the CUNA Advocacy Update. I'm Ryan Donovan, CUNA's Chief Advocacy Officer. It's July 27th, 2020. Here are four things you need to know about credit union advocacy this week. NCUA will hold its July board meeting on Thursday. The House continues work on appropriations bills. Negotiations over the next round of recovery legislation heat up and pandemic related regulatory pause is over. The deadlines for several proposed rules approach in the coming weeks. Quickly, I wanna begin by mentioning that NCUA will hold its July board meeting on Thursday. The item that I'm watching closely is a final rule on field of membership. This rule comes a month after the Supreme Court decided not to hear field of membership litigation against NCUA. So expect the agency to further expand federal credit union field of membership authority. The NCUA board will also consider a proposed rule related to the transition to CECL methodology and a proposed rule related to fees paid by federal credit unions. Also on the agenda is a request for information on the overhead transfer rate and operating fee methodology and the NCUA board will get a mid-year budget briefing. On Capitol Hill, lawmakers and the public will pay their respects to the late Representative John Lewis, who will lay in state at the Capitol today and tomorrow. When they return to session, the House will consider the second in a series of minibus appropriations bills. This week, appropriations for the Departments of Defense, Commerce, Homeland Security, Labor, Health and Human Services, Education, Transportation, and Housing and Urban Development, as well as the Financial Services and General Government Appropriations Bill, the Energy and Water Appropriations Bill will all be considered. In this bill, we expect to support additional funding for the Community Development Financial Institution Fund, as well as the Community Development Revolving Loan Fund. Last week, the House passed the State Department Appropriations Bill and included a CUNA supported $17 million for the Cooperative Development Program. While the appropriations bills play out in public, there are a lot of negotiations taking place behind the scenes over the next round of recovery legislation. Expect to see legislation released by Senate Republicans later today on Monday. And know that whatever is released is not going to become law. It may not even end up being the bill that passes the Senate chamber. Republican leaders have the ball in their court to frame the next bill but they're having trouble coalescing around something that everyone can support. So expect to see some starts and stops in the next two weeks as the big pillars of the bill come together. And then they get to negotiate with Democrats who by all accounts remain united around additional funding for state and local governments, extended unemployment insurance and opposition to liability protections. In some ways, the distance between uh, the parties will make it more challenging to get new things into policy and into the bill. But on the other hand, it could make it easier to get past policy extended, particularly if leaders decide to keep the package narrow. So as we look to this recovery bill, we're urging Congress to extend the CARES Act credit union provisions. Those included the troubled debt restructuring accommodations, the expanded central liquidity facility authorities, and expanded share insurance coverage. We also sent a letter on Friday asking Congress to provide NCUA with some flexibility related to prompt corrective action. We want Congress to ensure the CDFIF and the CDRLF receive additional appropriations to help credit unions serve their members. We want to make sure that the PPP forgiveness process for small businesses is easier and that credit unions aren't on, on, the, on the hook if borrowers made errors or misrepresentations in the process. We've also encouraged Congress to include general COVID-19 liability protection to businesses, including credit unions that are open and serving customers, and to provide state and local governments with sufficient funding to mitigate COVID-19 costs. So we expect to see the bill this week, and we expect that Congress is gonna pass something here in the next couple of weeks before recessing for August. Speaker Pelosi over the weekend uh, said, you know, the House can't go home uh, until there's a bill that uh, is sent to the president. There's a lot of talk right now that this could be the last recovery bill enacted before the election. 
and certainly the calendar would suggest that when the House and the Senate come back in September, they're going to be uh, focused uh, very appropriately on appropriations and then they'll likely recess for, um, for the final weeks of the campaign. But I think that there's going to be opportunities in the future for additional recovery measures. Nevertheless, important for us to be engaged in this process in the event that it is the last train to leave the station before the end of the year. Finally, I wanna provide a look ahead as I did last week on some of the re regulatory deadlines that we're facing. As I mentioned last week when COVID-19 hit, a lot of the regulators hit the pause button on their regulatory agendas and they worked to provide immediate accommodations to regulated entities. We saw this play out at NCUA and at CFPB and elsewhere. Well, that pause for all intents and purposes is now over and there's a backlog of regulatory proposals that are waiting to be acted on. So as you can see here, we're uh, commenting on several proposals over the next couple of months from NCUA, CFPB, FHFA, FinCEN, and others. We're gonna be reaching out to credit unions to help inform our comments. So please stay engaged with the CUNA communities where we regularly ask for feedback and don't hesitate to reach out to me if you have thoughts or questions on any of these proposals. As always, you can find more information about these and other advocacy issues on the CUNA website at cuna.org. That's it for this week. Thanks for taking some time to join me for the advocacy update. I hope you found it helpful and don't hesitate to reach out to me if you have any questions or concerns.